everyone doing? God. I like this guy, I like it, I like it. I know it's very, very hot in the room, so what I want you to do, quickly fan the person to your right, give them a couple of fans, cool them down a bit. Five seconds, quickly fan them for a bit. Stop, fan the person to your left, to your left now, to your left, give them a bit of a fan, it's kind of hot. Fan the camera, fan the camera. Fan the camera. Everyone feeling a bit cooler now? Everyone a bit cooler? Yeah. Anyone watch England yesterday? No. Yeah. Anyone didn't? Yeah. You didn't watch it? See, I genuinely believe, like, I know we say this every tournament, I know we say it every Euro, every World Cup, but I genuinely believe it. Genuinely might be coming home this year. No? Yeah, or at least if it's if not home, at least to the side street, right? Or at least to the neighbour if it's not coming home, but I'm optimistic anyway. So my name's Kyrie Damali. I'm a mum and dad's son. I'm Warrington, Beamon Collegiate Academy. It's an absolute pleasure to come here today. And Warrington, it's been a while since I'd last come to Warrington, you know. In fact, the last time I was in Warrington was in August, you know, of 2020. I had to get, you know how everyone went virtual, right? I had to get a new webcam and I had to go to Curry's. And they said the only place you can get it is actually in Warrington. So as I was getting the cab from the train station today, I saw the curries, it's just literally over there. I was like, bro, I've actually been here before. <laughs> Crazy, I've actually been here before. <laughs> and then the time before that, the time before that I came to Warrington was actually, um, anyone heard of Charlie Sloth? But yeah, you know, Charlie, raise your hand higher, man. I can't see it from here. Charlie Sloth, you know Charlie Sloth? So he's a um, BBC Radio One Extra DJ, or used to be or an entrepreneur, and he does AU vodka and stuff like that. And he had a nightclub which just opened in Warrington and actually went to the nightclub New Year's event in 2020. So that's a couple of times I have been to Warrington. But I'm not from Warrington, of course. I'm initially from Catford in South London. Now, I'm mostly known for being on BBC The Apprentice. Anyone watch it? Are we on it? Who yeah. said yeah? Oh, it's a star. So I'm actually mainly known for being on BBC The Apprentice and being an entrepreneur. And the question you might be asking yourself is, how did I actually become an entrepreneur or how did I actually get into business? And it all started back when I was at school. Now, one thing which I find so interesting, and some of you might realize this as well, now like why is it when everyone tells their origin story of how they became an entrepreneur, it's always, yeah, I used to sell cookies and donuts in the playground. Yeah, I used to sell, I used to sell Lucasade. Like, has anyone heard people say that before? Like, I, I'm kidding you not. Go on, go on Instagram, go on I'm Just Bait, or if you go on Made You Think, any of them bait Instagram pages, they're always showing entrepreneurs at school, like, selling cookies, selling donuts. But what I don't understand is that if everybody at school was selling cookies and donuts in the playground at the same school, at the same day, at the same time, with the same product, it's not just a saturated market. Surely someone's lying, right? So for me, I can kind of say that, what? I could kind of say that, yeah, I, I, I sold cookies and donuts in the playground. Let me tell you exactly what happened. I must have been in year nine, right? I was in year nine, so middle, middle of school, right? And at year 11, so year 10, you just come and sell cookies and donuts, like Smarties cookies. Roller. I was a big fan of the Rollers cookies, you know. Listen, I, I'm not, I didn't used to be fat, but I was a fan of the Rollers cookies. 50p, I'll give them that. You know, I used to sell the cookies, sell the donuts. And that clocks on like, right, these guys are making a bit of money. Now, now looking back at it, they were probably only making like £10 a day, which is nothing. But at the time, you know, when you're young, you're looking at £10, and that's a lot of money, right? So I thought to myself, you know what, I'm going to start selling cookies and donuts in the playground too. The only issue is that on my way to school, I didn't pass a shop to do that. I didn't pass the main Sainsbury's to get them cheap. The only place I could get my cookies and donuts was from the Sainsbury's by the petrol station, which means there's premium prices. But with premium prices, I mean, I can get a premium product. So I used to come to school with the raspberry and white chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> like, is your mouth watering? <laughs> like, I had the, they had the Rolos and the Smarties, but I had the raspberry white chocolate chip cookies. I was like, yo, this is me, this is me. Got to school, went to St. Therese Petrol Station, picked up, got to school. Period one, I'm sitting down, I'm in English, sitting there in English, thinking, yes, as soon as lunchtime comes, I'm going to move these cookies. They're, they're probably learning about Shakespeare or of mice and men or so. You see, they are still do of mice and men. 
Yeah, yeah, I was probably learning about Of Mice and Men, Lenny, you know, I know you got capped, but you know, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, I was probably learning about... <laughs> oh, did I spoil... Oh, did I spoiler alert, sorry, spoiler alert, sorry, spoiler alert, if you didn't find out what happened to Lenny, I apologise. But um, there's some day sitting in English, thinking, yeah, as soon as lunchtime comes, I'm going to move these cookies, move these donuts. And I could start to smell them. I was like, the temptation was kicking in, I was like, alright, let me just have one, let me just eat one. I was like, right, I've still got four left, I said, okay, I've got four left. Period two, we're in science now, we're in science. I'm like, oh, got my cookies, four more left, four more left. Let me, I've got to try and make sure I don't eat this. By the end of science, I ate all my cookies. <laughs> got to lunch time, I'm like, Cody, where's the raspberry and white chocolate? You promised us raspberry and white chocolate chip, where are they? I'm like, oh, I'm sorry, you know, science, science got me, man. Like, I didn't know if I was smelling the Bunsen burner or if I was smelling my cookies. But I was like, oh, no, I just had to eat them. I'm like, tomorrow, I've got you tomorrow, I've got you tomorrow. So next thing. Same threes, what? Kai, you want the same again? No, I, just don't, I want two bags of the raspberry and white chocolate chip cookies. Wednesday brought them to school. But this time, period one and period two, we had double PE. And you know what happens after you finish PE, right? You get what? You get what? Hungry. So end of the PE, I'm looking at my cookies and donuts again, thinking, man, the temptation's real. Got to lunchtime. Cody, where's all your white chocolate, white chocolate chip and raspberry cookies? Sorry, man, I ate them. I'll get you tomorrow. The final day, I thought, you know, if I can't get this right one time, I am not doing this whatsoever. I am not doing it at all. Got the cookies and donuts, went there on the first day, got to the playground, lunchtime, ready to sell all my cookies and donuts. Then one of the big year 11s came and robbed them off me. <laughs> So I was like, you know what, this business thing is not for me, forget it, entrepreneur, I'm not on it, forget it. But then when I was in year 11, GCSEs, probably maybe year 10, year 11, I was quite good at maths. And we had some think that if you were in a top set of maths at the time in year 10 and year 11, you had the opportunity to take an extra GCSE in statistics. GCSE, well, you know how Michael, you, know, you guys know Michael Duffer? You know, he goes like, check the statistics. I don't know if you know it. Yeah, he goes, check, check, yeah, you know it, innit? Go, yeah, check the statistics. I was like, statistics. <laughs> so we had an opportunity to take an extra GCSE in statistics. But the only issue is that because this was an extra GCSE, the timetable's already full. Monday to Friday, you've got period one to period five, that's all full. Where are we going to have statistics? Okay, we'll put the statistics before school. Nah, man, I ain't coming before school to the statistics. Forget that. Okay, all right, cool, cool. We put the statistics after school. Now I've got football after school. I can't, I can't do statistics after school. I've got football. All right, all right, cool, cool, no problem. It's only like five of us who could, could have done it. Then he said, all right, here's what we're going to do. We're going to put the GCC statistics at lunchtime. We're like, oh, then what about lunch? Oh, no, don't worry, don't worry. We got you. We're going to give you three baguettes and three sandwiches. I'm, like, yeah, I'm, I'm down for that. Well, three baguettes for tuna mayonnaise. I'm down for that. So we had three, three, three baguettes during our statistics at lunchtime, probably a couple of times a week for the whole year to take GCSE. But then my entrepreneur brain started kicking in again. So I'm sitting there in statistics. Miss, I don't want to say her name. Give me a woman's name. I don't want to say my teacher's name. Someone give me a name. Emma. Emma. I'll call her Emma. I'll call her Emma. So Miss Emma will give us these three baguettes and three sandwiches during our GCSE statistics. Then my entrepreneur brain starts ticking. I was like, hold on a second. There's only five of us or however many in this class, and we've got a whole box of sandwiches. If I take these sandwiches and sell them in the playground, that's just pure profit. I've got no overhead costs. And here's the kicker. They're selling them in the cafeteria for £2.50. Just laughing already. You know where this is going, right? If, I, if they're selling them in the cafeteria for £2.50, if I tell them, don't get them for cafeteria, get them for me, I'll give them to you for one pound fifty, save yourself a pound. I was like, this is sick. Every Tuesday, Wednesday, I've got this. But then Emma clocked on to what I was doing. Cody, I've been told that you've been taking the free sandwiches we've been giving you into assistance and sending them in the playground to people instead. No, no, that, was, that was Oliver, miss. That wasn't Oliver. How common on Oliver? Come on, Oliver. That was Oliver. That weren't me. Okay, no worries. We're going to monitor it, see what happens. So the next time she caught me, I was like, ah, oh, damn, yeah, it was me, it was me, it was me. Okay, miss, I won't do it anymore. Emma, Emma, right? Emma, I'm not going to do it anymore. I'm sorry. 
Rafiq mentioned that, you know, you've got to have resilience. You know, when you have an obstacle, how can you get around the obstacle? So I said, right, okay, I can't take these sandwiches out of the class, but I need to get them out of the sandwiches. I need to get the sandwiches out of the room, sorry. So what I did was that, this is so not, I'm a good youth now, you know, I'm not this bad. At the, at the time, I was, I was you know, I, open, I used to open the window and throw them out to my friend outside <laughs> and tell him, hold them for me, I'll meet you at the end of the lesson. To cut a long story short, I got kicked off GCC statistics. They said my motivations were wrong. And looking back, and I was so upset, you know, I really enjoyed statistics. You know what, I'm a, I'm a big sucker for Excel spreadsheets. I don't know what, that's the geek in me. I mean, it's no wonder I like cryptocurrencies and stuff now, because I just love maths, I love num, I, I love spreadsheets. Like most guys like FIFA, they like PlayStation. I'm a sucker for a good spreadsheet. So I'm quite, I'm quite bugged that I missed out on that. So that was my second open entrepreneurial chance, which didn't go down too well. My third one, it was after I left school and I was at college. Now this is one I can't go into too much details in because it's not my proudest moment. Because you see, when I left school in year 11, I ended up, some people say, do you get caught up in the wrong crowd? I was like, no, I think the wrong crowd got kind of caught up with me. You know, so my third sort of trying to make money wasn't in the best ways which is why that at 16 years old, I was actually sent to Camberwell Youth Court where I got um, sentenced to an eight month referral order, you know? So that kind of hung with me throughout my college. And it's because of that, you heard in the introduction, that I didn't pass college. Now they're decent in my GCSEs, but I didn't pass college because of the activities that we were getting up to. So when it came to university now, I was like, right, like, what, am I, what am I going to do? You know, because I didn't pass college, I didn't have the required ACAS points to get into university. You know, my top five, you know, you have your main choice, provisional choice, whatever. They all turned me away as soon as the August 2010 came. I was like, right, man, what am I supposed to do? Like, how am I supposed to now progress? I've now got this conviction on my back, if you want to call it that. What am I really going to do? So I had to pick up the phone and phone universities through the clearing process. So what a clearing process is, the best way I can describe clearing is that it's just like a call centre but for university, just calling them, you know, can you let me in? No. Oxford University, hi, I'm Coyote. Coyote? No, you can't come here. Cambridge! You know, I was ambitious, right? Cambridge, listen, can you let me in? No, I can't let me in, no, no. I was literally like, you know Mary and Joseph knocking at the doors to try and find a place at the inn? It was literally like that, like, you know what I mean? Imagine Mary Joseph knocking around. You know, they ended up in the barn, but I ended up at Manchester Metropolitan University. So eventually they did let me in. Not to say that MMU's like the barn, I'm not trying to make the comparison. It's, like, MMU's good, I saw, I saw one, of your lit one of your teachers had an MMU logo actually, but um, I ended up at Manchester Metropolitan University. And then that's where my fourth business venture kicked in. Now, in halls, you know, it's like at halls at uni, everyone's in the blocks, you're all first years or second years at the time. You know, you're just around friends, whatever, whatever. It's great. Being in, anyone want to go uni? Show of hands? Yeah, some of you want to go uni? Yeah, uni's, uni's great, man. I love uni. Uni's great. So I had a friend of mine from Manchester who lived at the halls near the car park. Well, his block was near the car park, near the parking lot, near the back. So one night, we're in his flat playing fever. I think it was like fever 10, you know, this is throwback, like throwback, right? Fever 10 or something crazy like that. And um, it's like half 10, half 11. People are getting ready to go to a night, people are getting ready to go in taxis to go to the nightclub, the local nightclub, you know, to get taken, picked up by the taxis to go to the club. So I'm there watching, I'm not, I wasn't a peeping Tom, by the way, I wasn't a peeping Tom. Tom next door was peeping, <laughs> but I wasn't a peeping Tom. So I'm there watching the guys thinking, right, like, there's a lot of students here waiting for taxis, but there's so few taxis. And sometimes it'll be raining up, they're, they're, they're there waiting in the rain to get a taxi, but there's only like a couple of taxis picking them up. So I thought to myself, right, like if that's the case, and my car's right there, they're queuing up by my car to get a taxi. So I thought, why don't I just drop the students to the nightclub and have a little taxi service going? And that's what we did. So I had my friend stand on the gate, he stood on the gate, collecting money. We charged, like ours was a flat rate, no matter where you want to go, there's a pound a head. 
You know, it's much cheaper than a taxi. It's a pound ahead, no matter where you want to go. So I maximum people I could fit in my cars, you know, five-seater, me driving, that's four. So I used to have four pound a journey, and I'm not going far. We used to just literally bang them out during the night. Four pound, four pound, four pound, four pound, four pound, four pound. And that's the fourth business venture that I actually did, which is great. And then I stopped business after that completely. And I wouldn't necessarily call that business. That was more like a quick hustle, really. It wasn't necessarily, it was just a quick hustle at night time. Then I kind of put my brakes, I kind of stopped business completely because I just wanted to focus on my degree. And that's what I did for the next couple of years. I just focused working really, really hard. Because I've seen what it's like to fail college. I've seen, I saw the outcome and I did not like it. And that's why I was determined to like, right, you know what? I want to get this first class honours degree. I need to get this first class honours. And lo and behold, in 2013, when I graduated from Manchester Met, I got a published first class honours degree in psychology. But not only did I get a first class, you know, I got one of the, literally one of the highest ranked in my year. It's, it's crazy. MMU has, what, 30,000 students divided by three for three years, probably 10,000 people graduating every year. And I was literally in the top percentile of people who graduated and they gave me extra award and stuff like that at graduation. So business for me, I wasn't necessarily focused on it. I just focused on my education because I saw the outcome of the failing of the college. But it's during my third year that business did start to come to me a little bit. Now I had a guy in my year, I don't want to say his name. Someone give me a boy's name, a boy's name. Any boy's name? Whoa, 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 whoa. One part, I heard it from over there. A boy's name? Jordan? Tony. I'll call him Tony. Is that, is that your name? Okay. So Tony came up to me in my third year. Tony is in my class. He's like, Cody, I'm going to start this new business at uni. It's about, um, what was he going to do? He was going to supply the accommodation halls around the country for international students with packs, such as bedding and stuff like that. When you're flying from abroad, you can't afford to bring bedding, mattresses, or whatever, whatever. He was going to supply them for the universities around the year. I'm like, yeah, Tony, that's great, Tony. That's cool. That's great. I'm happy for you. I'm just focusing on my degree. I'm not really trying to, I'm not really trying to hear it as such. I had another girl come up to me during my final year. She was part of a company called, um, anyone heard of Herbal Life before? Yeah, Herbal Life? She was telling me about Herbal Life, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, you know, I'm not really trying to hear it. You know, it sounds cool. I'm just focusing on my degree. Got the degree, and then after the course, you've got to find somewhere to work, right? But during my final third year of university, I thought to myself, you know what? I don't want to be in this rat race of people having to find a job after they graduate. I want to have this all lined up. So what I did was that I made sure that I wanted to be elected the vice president and governor of my university. And what that is, that's like similar to um, Charlotte here in office. You have to get elected for it. You have to get the votes, you know, you get voted in, etc., for a one year term in office. So I got the votes and I got elected vice president and governor of my university in March of 2013. That was, a, that was a position starting in the July 2013 and finishing to July 2014. So one year term in office. Just like when you become president in America, you can have the chance to run for two years, two terms. So, when it, so remember, I got elected in March of 2013. So if I wanted to run again, I have to run again in March of 2014 to start in July of the 2014. So I had to make the decision in the, July, in the March of 2014, did I want to run again to be the vice president? I decided not to. I had a good, uh, see, I was on the fence, you know, do I run again to be vice president? It's great, you know, you've got the perks of being vice president, you get the perks of running the university, you know, good stuff and stuff like that. But I was only, my heart was only 50% in it. Well, I had another friend of mine, he really wanted to do it. So I said, you know what? If I ran again, it was a very strong chance I would have got elected again. But I said, you know what, I'm going to stand back I'm going to let you run it and I'm going to help support you to get elected. That was great because I helped get him elected, but then what about me? I've got nothing to fall back on. So we're in March, I'm like, right, I've got four months left on my term in office. I've got four months left to try and get myself together. Four months left to try and get things sorted out. We're in April, we're in April now. Oh man, I've only got three months left, I've got three months. What am I going to do when it comes to July? What am I going to be doing? We're in May, we are now in May, we're in May. Damn, I've got two months left, what am I gonna do? We're in June, we're literally in June as well, right? But we're in June, we're in June, what am I gonna do come to July when I've got no job? We're in July, 
had to lock the door for the last time, thinking, damn, now what, what is my next step? What is my plan? When I was at university, there was a local guy who used to run nightlife events for us. And, you know, he's, he was a local person. He was a go-to person. He ran houses. He ran, you know, he's clear now. He lives in Thailand now. He's clear. Yeah. He ran the events. He ran nightlife. And me and him, we always had a great relationship. We always got on well. So I remember saying to him, like, oh, give me another guy's name. I don't want to say, give me a guy's name. Daz. Daz. Call him Daz. I remember saying, Daz. I was saying, Daz, like, listen, Daz, I just finished my time in office. I've got nothing to fall back on. What, what can I do? He said to me, Coyote, look, I always liked you. Come and do events for me. And then from my first event in the 2014, I ran my events business, literally all the way up until 2020. So that's six years. And it's in that time was when I actually applied to go and see Apprentice in the 2018. And the whole reason, a lot of people say to me, Kaido, why did you apply for the show? So the event business went well, it was great, you know, nightlife, party, and it was great. But after a while, the business started to go down. You know, every year I'm fighting to keep this going, like, please, come on, the events, it needs to get happening, it needs to keep popping, it needs to keep popping. But nothing kind of lasts forever, so after a while, the events started to go downhill. So that's why I applied for the show in 2018, because my events business was going well, I thought, you know what, let me apply for the apprentice, and lo and behold, I got on. Now, I didn't win the show, unfortunately, I didn't win. But I was arguably the favourite in my year, which is why I won the favourite reality TV star of the year in 2019. And you know what's so great? Because in my category for favourite reality TV star, I had all the Love Islanders, you know, like who else was in my category? It was me. Oh, I'm going to bait them up now. Josh Denzel was in my category. I think Wes. I thought, right, I'm going up against Josh, Josh and Wes and some other people. Like, how on earth am I going to win? I'm well, sorry, I won. Forget Love Island, forget Love Island, I don't need Love Island, I won anyway. So that was kind of great for me. So that's kind of how I got into business and kind of how I got to where I am today. But now for yourselves, what about you? You see, I understand that you broke up on May the 18th, right? And you, ca and you came back to your, um, what is it, interviews? What do you call it, the interviews? To your interviews. And then you come back here today. But my question for you is that what have you, what have you been doing since? Like, how have you, how have you, how have you been utilising your time? Because here's the thing that I realised, right? That life is short. Life is short. And life goes very, very quickly. Like, kid you not, right? I got my first grey hair, gray, first grey hair a couple of weeks ago. Like my mum came save me during a, during a half term. She's like, Kai, you got some, you got some fluff in your hair. You got some fluff in me. I'm like, yeah, again. Okay, cool. Take it out, take it out. So next day she goes, Kai, you got some fluff in here. I'm like, wow, this fluff is persistent. <laughs> it's only when she left, I got into the shower, dry my hair, like, wow, that fluff is still there. Brushing off, brushing off, brushing off, thinking, why isn't this fluff going? And you know when just a penny drops. I was like, wow, I've actually got a grey hair. See, a part of me at first was sad, but I was like, man, as if I got my first grey hair. Like, as if I got my first grey hair. Can I remember I used to clown on my friends back at uni, because he started getting grey hairs in his late teens, early 20s. I was like, right, how have you got grey hair already? He goes, he was like, oh, I run to my family, genetics, genetics. And now I find myself in my bathroom thinking, right, I've got a grey hair. But then you know what? I was very proud about the fact I got my first grey hair. I remember I took a selfie of it and I sent it to my family group chat on WhatsApp saying, I've got grey hair. They're like, why are you so happy? I was like, this means wisdom. I was like, this is a sign of wisdom. I need to give this grey hair a name. Any guess what I called my grey hair? Melvin. No, I didn't call him Melvin. I didn't call him, I didn't call him Gerald. I'm so proud about this. You know what I call my one grey hair? Jeremiah. <laughs> no, I call him Graham. <laughs> so I got Graham. And I know you can't see him now. I know you can't see him now because on the weekend just gone, I got a haircut. So, you know, you can't see Graham now. So I cut Graham off, but hopefully he comes back. But also on the weekend just gone, I got my haircut in Manchester. As I drove back to mine, I clicked on the Euros on Saturday. 
Anyone remember what game was on Saturday? It's Denmark. Now, why is it, like, the second I turned on my TV, I saw a scene on, this, on the screen, you, some of you might know where I'm, where I'm coming to with this, I saw a screen on my TV, it was probably the worst thing I have ever seen in my life. A football player, aged 29 years old, by the name of Christian Eriksen, fell down on the pitch, cardiac arrest. Now, why is it that the moment I put on BBC One, I happened to be, it happened to be at that part of the game? I could have put it on BBC One 15 minutes before this accident. I could have put it on 15 minutes after this accident. But I happened to turn on the screen at that moment. Now, the reason why that brought me almost to tears, like Alex Scott, she was in the beam, she was in the, she was a pundit. She texted her mum saying, Mum, I love you. You know, it was proper moving. And me and my far self, I, I didn't know what happened. I just saw the guy on the floor. I think, why is the game stopped? I've gone into Twitter, then I saw the video of actually what happened, and my heart sank. Now, let me tell you why my heart sank. 2003, a football player by the name of Mark Vivian Foe playing for Cameroon, 28 years old, cardiac arrest, cardiac arrest on the pitch, died. Nine years later, Fabrice Muamba in 2012, playing for Bolton, 23, 24 years old at the time, cardiac arrest on the pitch, thankfully survived. Another nine years. I remember seeing Fabri I remember seeing Vivian throw in 2003. Seeing it, I was in primary school at the time thinking, yo, that's kind of bad, like bad. Nine years, I remember seeing Fabrice Mama playing for Bolton in 2012, thinking, oh, that's kind of bad. Another nine years, like three nines, that's a real emergency, right? 2021, same thing, Christian Eriksen. Now the reason why this one hit me way harder is because Christian Eriksen's 29 years old. I am 29 years old. So when I saw that happen to him, it literally just reminded me of the mortality that we have as people. That life is short. We ain't gonna be here forever. And I believe the reason why I turned on the TV at that time on Saturday, I couldn't watch it 15 minutes before or 15 minutes after. I believe the reason why I saw that clip at that time is to remind you of the same message. that life happened very, very quickly. We ain't gonna be here forever. And up until now, you're in year 11. You have, by default, leveled up in life, by default. And why I say that is because you went from year seven to year eight by default. You, you have to go to year eight. From year eight, you then went to year nine. You have to go to year nine. It's not like in America. In America, if you failed year eight, they'll, they'll keep your ass back. You gotta redo the eighth grade. Oh, like, what happened to Barry? Oh, Barry's still in the eighth grade. Barry's still in the eighth grade. But in the UK, we by default level up. So we get programmed at school that we're always going to level up every year. You go from year seven to year eight, year eight to year nine, year nine to year 10, year 10 to year 11. You're going to go to year 11, then you're going to go to year 12. But life doesn't work like that. You are not going to keep leveling up by default. If you stop working hard, the way you've been leveling up, you're just going to start flatlining. So we have to keep working hard, we have to keep going. Because Mr. Reynolds, he can push you through years in school, but who's gonna push you when you leave? That's gotta be down to you. Because the bad news is that time flies. But the good news is that you are the pilot. So I ask you, are you gonna be flying your aircraft to keep leveling up? Or are you just gonna stay flatlined? Because in life, you're either dying or you're growing. So which way are you going? Because you can take off and stay fly like a Boeing or fall down from the sky like it's snowing. Are you putting yourself all in? Or are you just dipping your toe in? 
So as I close, just mm. remind you of that. Are you putting yourself all in when you leave, or are you just going to dip your toe in? So it's your last day. Let's end on a high note. Let's end on a high note. I've seen some of you got your pens. You know, to sign shirts. At school, we never had we never had shirt signings at school. You know, I think we probably got peanut in. You know, when you get a tie and peanut someone. <laughs> we didn't have shirt signing. We probably had peanut in. So I'm jealous. Man. I've never had a shirt signing. In fact, in 2015, I was at summer camp as a weights and fitness specialist. We did have some shirt signing then, but I've never had any shirt signing. So. Before we do your shirt, Sunday, I just want to end on something. I want to end on a little clap. Because we're in the Euros, right? And in Euro 2016, two things come to mind. The first thing that comes to mind for me in Euro 2016 was that that's when I got listed in the top 10 of the top 100 most powerful young entrepreneurs in the world. Like, I remember sitting on my couch watching Euros 2016, and I got a tweet come through, like, Ram, they're telling me that, Cody, you're top 10 of the top 100 most powerful young entrepreneurs in the world. I thought, like, oh, this is amazing, thank you. And the second reason I remember Euro 2016 is called the Icelandic clap, if you remember it. So in the true spirit of the Euros, I want to end on the Icelandic clap. So how it works is that you do it very slowly, and then we build it up. So you ready? So on me, on me, ready? On me, on me, don't jump the gun. <laughs>